So today I am going to tell you about what exactly we can do as per Ayurvedic daily regime so that we can keep ourselves healthy. So first of all, we will be uh, praying to Lord Dhan Mantri. Namami Dhan Mantri Ma Adi Devam Sura Sarevandit Parvadvam Loke Jaradubhar Mithri Nasham Dhatari Misham He is the one basically who, uh, who taken, next slide, who has taken the uh, legacy of Ayurveda from Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma was the one who recalled the Ayurveda and he has given him to Lord Dhan Mantri and from Lord Dhan Mantri he travelled to the earth by different cities. Next slide. What is the basic aim of Ayurveda? Swastaste Swat Prashnam Atrasya Vikar Prashnam It means the one who is healthy, we have to maintain the health of the healthy person, and the one who is ill, we have to treat the illness of that person. It also helps to prolong the longevity and provide the quality of life. What are the doshas of Ayurveda? Basically, like we see, uh, like you all are uh, from the agriculture background, so we see on us water, air, uh, earth, ether and fire. These are the five elements which we cannot extract out from the universe. If these will be extracted out, the universe will not be the universe as we are watching it. So, in the same way, if we are taking out these three doshas out of the body, the body will not be there. I am just trying to explain you in a simple language. Uh, these are known as Barpit Kaf. These are the background of Ayurvedic doctor. Without this, we cannot treat any of the disorders and these are the three doshas if any of them get imbalanced inside the body wherever they are uh, increased or decreased are causing the disorders in the body what exactly is vata vata is the air air inside the body when you feel like uh, you are bloating there is a heaviness uh, in the head your head is boasting and you are feeling mo more of burps it means there is air air vata involvement vata we can consider with the neurological uh, Nervous system, pitta. What is pitta? The one which produces heat inside the body. Like you are taking uh, the raw flour and then you are kneading it and then you are cooking it over the fire to convert it into chapati so that we can eat it. In the same way, the pitta is the one which works like enzymes in the body. Whatever we are eating, this this product, whatever we eat, is converted as per the body's requirement. Is the one which is done by pitta. Kapha. What exactly is kapha? You see when you are your body is getting dry, you keep on applying some oils or creams or lotions over the body so that your skin becomes lubricated, hydrated, you feel happy. In the same way, kapha is the, uh, kapha is the dosha in which helps to lubricate the body. Like if there is no saliva over the uh, tongue, you cannot speak. If there is no tears inside the eyes, your eyes cannot open. You always keep on doing like this, that my eyes are getting very dry. If there is no sweat over the skin, your skin becomes very dry. You always feel like applying oils and oils and creams and all such things. So this is basically kapha. So all these things should be there in the body in an appropriate position to help the body to work properly. Now, next slide. Please. If these things are not there, can you uh, click out the play? I don't know whether it will be or not. No, no, there's no issue. Uh, basically, this is the treatment principle what we do in uh, uh, for balancing the kapha. When there is too much of stickiness inside the body, many of the times you feel that in the young children, when we see young children, they keep on coughing, 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 and sometimes they puke out. So when they puke out, they feel relaxed. How it happened? It happened because all the kapha is there inside the upper area of the body. So when we are eliminating the doshas from the upper part of the body, it is known as the Vaman Karma. Here you see that this, this, this is the girl who is suffering with so many disorders. She is obese, she is having PCOS, she is having a lumbar back, uh, lumbar back ache, she is diabetic. And she came to us, we started treatment 6 months ago and with the 6 months of treatment she is almost 50 to 60 percent fine but her periods were not getting regular. So my wife told that we should plan for the woman karma because her kapha is not in a proper uh, range. It, it is much more than the level which we have to expect. So we did the woman karma and now we will see to what exactly the changes will be there. But all those patients in which the patients are having PCOS, many of the times the girls are suffering polycystic ovarian disorder, previous case was not there. But now it is very common, every three or four girl is suffering with polycystic ovarian disease where the periods are irregular, she is having loss of hair over the scalp and she is having excessive of hair on the 
face and other body parts she is having acne obesity uh, and uh, mood swings all such things are there so in those conditions we uh, read the prakriti of the patient and accordingly we plan for the common karma or duration karma next slide which we will be discussing in the next slides so this is for with the balancing with the balancing in this you can see that in this condition we ask our patient to eat few of the uh, ghee which has to be given as per the patient's digestive fire so once we give that give to the uh, patient after that we see particular symptoms are, are, are arise achieved once those symptoms are achieved after then we ask the patient to have a gap of 2 days in which we give full body massage and steaming to the patient and after then we ask for the purgation we ask the patient to come early in the morning and we give some of the medicine which keep on giving loose motion to the patient the whole day generally we see if we get one or two loose motion the patient will feel like i am very i am getting very tired i cannot do anything so please stop or give some iv fluids or give some ors but in these condition when we do this panchakarma procedure of duration karma maximum it has been said that if you get 30 motions in a day then even there will be no any problem until today we have seen that in my patients 25 motions are the maximum highest which i recorded in my past 10 years of experience and patient has not even landed up single patient has landed up into any complication they all feel very light and happy in the body and recently last month ago i did a virachan karma she was having rheumatoid arthritis she was having her uh, ra factor 50 and she was told that you have to keep whole life on those anti arthritic drugs but the time she came to us we started giving medications and after then giving this panchakarma today her ra factor is 6 which is very normal the normal range is up to 14 and now it is 6 it, it is very normal the pain the pain of the patient joint pain uh, heaviness feeling all these things has gone after this virachan karma because we have seen that the patient was having too much aggravation of pain in the body the other thing is rakta mokshan which i cannot show you here because videos are not working over here but the rakta mokshan is a procedure which also helps to bring down the pitta in a normal range in this rakta mokshan you might have given blood for testing so in the same way when uh, when we have to do rakta mokshan to the patient we ask our patient to have grit for at least 3 days or we ask our patient to have this khichdi uh, for at least 3 days after that on the fourth day we ask the patient to come we give snehan swedan snehan swedan with the steaming and oiling to that particular area and after then we drain out the impure blood this is rakta mokshan which helps the patient immediately if we do rakta mokshan we have seen changes if the patient of herpes is there who is suffering with too much of burning and pain if we give this rakta mokshan to the patient the pain immediately subsides from 50% to 60% if we do it uh, in an interval the herpes can go away in in patients of migraine in patients of hair loss acne we do this rakta mokshan very frequently in our center and we are getting very positive changes with the same thing many of the times patient claims there is too much of burning in the feet so in that particular area if there is too much of burning in the feet we give this rakta mokshan to the patient and the patient gets very happy thank you sir how to balance this vata vata is it is a basically a basti uh, generally when whenever there is a delivery of a uh, uh, lady before delivery doctors provide this enema so that the colon gets clear because she has to pose to expel out the baby in the same way we are giving medicated enemas to the patient in which we are using different type of oils like oil we are using we are using waters of medicated herbal medicine we are using uh, uh, this uh, milk with, by preparing it with certain medicines like aloe neem vasa uh, and all such herbs which we mix with the uh, milk and water and process them and then we can enter that through the anus area this is like when you are watering the plant in the root and the 10 feet plant up to the height of 10 feet the leaves are getting very much happy they are nourishing so in the same way when we are entering our medicines from this particular area from head to toe each and every part is getting benefited there whatever problems are there to that particular patient accordingly we decide the medicines which has to be given in this basti and that basti is working to treat the neurological disorders to treat bone and joint disorders to treat skin disorders hair disorders eye disorders so in the same way we are balancing vata with this next slide sir then generally then now we are coming to dinacharya what exactly is dinacharya how we can keep ourselves healthy by following these things there are certain things if we are following those things in our in our day to day life 
then we can keep ourselves healthy. It is not like if you are doing all these things, you will never land up into any of the problem. But we say that if you are doing all these things, we can at least we can at least delay those aging process. We can delay those problems which are going to hamper in near future. Next slide, sir. Ayurvedic routine for the day. Now there are two factors, uh, two cycles. Now this is 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. There is vata in the body. 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. There is pitta in the body. 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. There is kapha in the body. In the same way, in the morning and evening, there are two different cycles. Means two times in a day we are having pitta predominance. Two times in a day we are having kapha, and two times we are having vata predominance. So why these are the second? We have to understand in the pitta. Uh, time if you are eating food it will be getting digested very easily in the vata time if you are eliminating the toxins it will getting eliminated very easily in the kapha time if you are getting your sleep you are feeling very happy if you are doing sleep in the vata time you will not get that much sleep which is required by your body if you are eating uh, in the kapha time then your digestion will not work in the way we want Okay, so this is the reason why these things are written and we have to follow these things. Now waking up early in the morning at the Brahm Murat is necessary. Why it is necessary? Sunlight. Sun, it is said that Brahm Murat is 1 hour 36 minutes prior to sunlight. Sunlight. Now why do we say that it is very much necessary to get up early in the morning? In the, uh, like I had said in the earlier slide that in the morning time there is a vata predominance before 6 am there is vata in the body if we are getting up in that particular vata period we will we will eliminate the toxins like we have to go for passing out the stool we have to urinate so eliminations has to be done in the vata time because vata is the one which is controlling all the movements in the body whatever movements like from eating food to expelling out the uh, feces Vata is there which helps to remove these things. If we are not getting up in the morning in the Vata Kal, the things will not working in the same way. Like now you see many of the patients are getting up late in the morning. They are sleeping late at the night. Now when they are sleeping late at the night, at that time there is Pitta imbalance. So many of the times those who are sleeping late, they will start complaining, I am having burning sensation in my chest, I am having acidity problem. Why? It is very normal because you are awake at the time when there is kapha time, when you have to sleep. But if that, if in, the, if in that time you are waking up and then your acidity will increase. So in those conditions we ask our patient to sleep early at the night and wake up early in the morning. So this is the thing if, you are, if we are doing these things in the way it will help. So why we have to get up in the morning because if Vata is in control, if Vata is there in control then your mind will be relaxed. If your mind is relaxed, you will feel happy. So in the same way we have to get up early in the morning. Secondly, it has been said that there is Usha Paan. Usha Paan means drinking of warm water. Da daily it has been said that many of, many of you uh, are aware of this thing that you have to drink water in the morning. But now some people get up in the morning at around 6 or 7 or 8 and they start drinking water. Now it is not the right time to drink water at 8 am or 8, 7 am because is at this time kapha is aggravated. Now in kapha kal if you are drinking water you are increasing kapha. So in in, in vata kal bath can subside it by having ushna jal only. If you are drinking lukewarm water you are just subsiding vata. Sometimes you feel that there is problem, pain in uh, stomach, abdominal distension, you had eaten too much heavier food. So if you will be drinking little lukewarm water or if you drink tea uh, after having that food, your uh, digestion will improve, you feel that you are now getting comfortable. So in the same way when we are drinking water, before 6 am it will work, otherwise it will not work. In the morning, uh, we have to take 10 to 15 minutes of sunlight. Why we need the sunlight? Generally you have seen that the sun is the most powerful planet around which all the other planets are working. Sun is considered as the father. So now when we are getting up in the morning, if we are not taking the sunlight, in the scientific way we are next slide. In the scientific way I can say that we are not taking vitamin D. If we are not taking vitamin D, then these are the things you can see that there is a huge list of disorders which we are uh, which we might get in coming future. So this is the only thing why they had said that when you get up early in the morning, you have to uh, pay offerings to the sun either by giving water or by giving or by doing sun solution. This is the basic reason why in our Indian tradition it has been said that sun solution is very much essential. Offerings 
uh, prayers to the sun in the morning time is very much essential because they somewhere know that vitamin D deficiency can lead to n number of disorders. So that is the reason why we are saying that you have to take vitamin D from the sun or by in the religious way you can say that you are paying offerings. But the reason is that you can not have such problems if you are not deficient of vitamin D. Answering the nature's call. Why we need to answer the nature's call at the right time? If we are not answering the call at the right time, then we will be ending up into many, many problems. How so? You see that when you do not get up early in the morning, sometimes we see that uh, I have to rush to the office or I have to rush to some work. We said, okay, we will uh, pass out the fee or we will do defecation at that particular area. So we travel to that area. Once we travel to that area, during that time we feel like there is abdominal bloating. Sometimes patients feel like there is heaviness of the head. Sometimes there is heaviness in the chest, in the uh, flanks area. So if we are not passing out the feces at the right time, which has been said that, then we are landing a bit to problems. Generally we see that, okay, there is bloating. Okay, no issues. Once we pass out the stool, the bloating will go away. But this is our misconception because in the long run, when we are dealing with such problems, slowly, 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 these things are creating toxins inside the body. When these toxins are accumulated inside the body for a longer duration of time, like for five months, six months, or one year or two years, two years, the patient will definitely have other major disorders. So this is the reason why we ask our patient that if you are not getting uh, uh, defecation at the proper time in the morning, start practicing it. If you do it daily for at least 10 minutes, you don't have to force it, just go and sit in, on the pot for at least 5 minutes or 10 minutes. Keep sitting over there, within 5 to 10 days you will get the habit of passing your defecation in that particular duration by what time you are just practicing daily. So this is the reason why we ask our patient to at least do defecation early in the morning rather than doing it anytime whenever you are comfortable. If you are doing it in this way, then definitely you will land up into n number of problems like I had this uh, here, headache, foul breath, poor tongue. Poor tongue means like many of the times you feel like your tongue is very much coated, very much thick. This directly indicates that your digestion at that moment is not right. And the other time if you are watching your tongue, you feel like my tongue is very fine. And the time when you see that your tongue is poured, you, uh, you can you directly have the thought that my stomach is not proper, I am not feeling very hungry, I am not feeling very okay, I am not feeling very happy, energetic, I am feeling very lethargic, I want to sleep. Sometimes it happens that if the patient is not having proper evacuation, we ask our patient to go and sleep for at least another one hour. If, because it is written in there in the Charak Sanghita, this is known as the Rasa Shesha gene. If a patient is having problem where the digestion is not getting uh, properly digested, food is not getting properly digested, you have to sleep for at least one, one and a half hour. Once you get up, the digestion will become okay and your food habits will be fine. Next question. Basically, why we do this Dantadhaman? Brushing is very much important. Na? Brushing, is, brushing is important because it Ideally, as per Ayurvedic tradition, we see that there are n number of herbs written there in the slide and you all belong to the Ayurvedic uh, agriculture fraternity, so you might be knowing the benefits of these things. Now, if I ask the patient to go uh, with the datun of Nimba, I am asking, I, I am trying to control his uh, skin disorders, I am trying to control his uh, diabetes, I am trying to control his uh, bleeding of gums and uh, sometimes the patient complains of this sensitivity in the tooth. They are unable to uh, have cold water or they are unable to have too much of hot, hot water. So in those conditions, if we are using these neem datums and khajar datums, they are increasing the uh, gum potential. They are treating the fighting with the bacteria and uh, fungi over there, which helps to retain a better teeth and oral quality. If we do not have this, uh, these twigs, then there is a tripla and trichetu. You might be knowing this tripla is uh, harad bhaira and uh, harad bhaira and amla and trichetu is uh, salt, marich and pipali. So, salt is dry ginger powder, marich is black pepper and pipali is long pepper. So if we are just brushing our teeth with these powders, you can see yourself in few days, those who are having tartar or yellowish teeth, if you brush your uh, teeth with this tripla, these, the skin becomes, uh, the, uh, there will be whitening of the teeth, the yellowness of the teeth will start getting reduced. If there is too much of pus or uh, you can say heaviness or swelling inside the gums, then we use trichotu powder. This also helps to reduce some of this problem. 
Now, basic uh, benefit of brushing is it increases the taste. Sometimes we feel that if we are not brushing, we do not feel to have the food. But in immediately after brushing, we feel that the tastes are developed because the bother cup is there. If that bother cup is not getting proper, uh, if that bother cup is not in the right proportion, it's going to cause other sakya. That means that there is loss of taste. Palladium anjanam. In traditional, uh, I. Uh, in traditional legacy in Indian religion, we generally do anjan karma. Anjan is like just uh, applying that uh, surma on the eyelids. It it helps. It helps to keep the shine in the eyes. It helps to make the vision proper. It helps to clear the eyes. This is the basic reason why it has been said that the anjanas are to be done even. So my two and a half year daughter, we are doing anjan. It is very safe, yeah, as because it is prepared in an Ayurvedic way. There is no any chemicals right now. We are observing that in the market there is a flood of uh, collarium and flood of eye uh, eyeliners and all such things. But they are having n number of chemicals because they want smudge free. They want that the color should uh, not uh, fade or color should not uh, flush smudge. So in the same way, if we are using this traditional surma or anjanas, they are very much beneficial for the eyes as it has written in the charak sanita. So just think to it, my two and a half month daughter, I am applying this because I know it is very safe and it helps to increase the vision and clear the eye. Nasyam, what exactly is Nasyam? Nasyam, many of the times you see that we do not clean our nose. There is no option. No, no one says that you have to pour the water or this. Just, you just have to clean the nose. Sometimes we feel snot is there. Sometimes we feel that my nose is blocked. Many of the times we go outside, dust particles enter the nose, and we just do it. And then after that we feel now what to do? My nose is getting dry. My nose is getting very much irritated. What I have to do? So Ayurveda has suggested a uh, nasyam on the daily basis. Uh, there are two types of nasyam. What is known as the pratimash nasya. Next slide. One is known as the Pratimash Nasya, which is which is uh, which has to be used daily, and this daily Nasyam can be used up to 10 to 14 times in a day. And there is another Nasya, which is known as the Marsh Nasya, which is a therapeutic which we do in our sandals because the difference is that in Pratimash Nasya we give one drop of oil or ghee or meat soup or uh, milk or any other thing, whatever we feel like giving to that patient. It is the one which by which we are treating insomnia and headache, migraine, eye disorders, teeth disorders, ear disorders and curing uh, hair loss problems next slide. So these are the basic uh, benefits of the Nasya. Many of the times people say that I am having heaviness in the shoulder, I am having heaviness in the jaw. Now the doctor will say okay you can take a painkiller, there is nothing else I can give or you can take a muscle relaxant. But if we give this Nasya to the patient as per the prakriti, if the patient is having heaviness then we will be thinking of some anti kapha uh, nasya like with marich tail nasya or uh, like sund tail nasya or vacha tail nasya. If the patient is having burning sensation in this particular area, then we will, we will be thinking of giving some cold potency uh, oils like we will be using uh, madhuyashtayadi oil nasya or we will be using guruchi tail nasya or we will be giving milk nasya. By giving these nasyas, we can treat the complexion of the patient also. Recently, we are working on the patient of blemishes and uh, I said that you have to use this kumkum nasya. So once she started using that along with the other medications and external applications what, what we had given the patients up to 80 to 90 percent the complexion has gone fair and the blemishes has reduced up to 90 percent by using this nasya along with other medications. Next slide. What, what is gargling? Gargling you all know that we just uh, pour the water inside our mouth and we just swish it around the mouth and just uh, it. But in this particular gargling, what we do, we ask the patient to drink the different type of oils or milk or meat soup or other uh, ingredients uh, prepared from the medicines which will improve the elasticity of the skin, which will improve the luster of the face, which will improve the glow over the skin and also it improves the eye Next slide. Basically, uh, these are the things like sesame oil, honey, milk, meat soup, rice gruel, herbal decoctions are used. We have to keep next slide. We have to keep this thing inside our mouth for a particular time till the eyes get watered. Like if we are keeping this inside the mouth, maximum time it takes around 20 minutes. But generally we see that patients do not hold it because it feels very tight. Patients start getting irritated. 
but in the initial stages if we give it for around 5 to 10 minutes and continuously we are giving it for, for uh, more than 7 days 10 days the patients develop the habit to do this and once they are doing for doing it following it then the patients are getting very much positive results if you are doing it with the system oil you are improving the glow of your skin you are improving the texture of your skin you are improving the eyesight you are improving your jawline Medicated smoke. Now, what exactly is medicated smoke? Many of the times you have seen that in the villages, just to remove or to uh, make the flies go away in the uh, cattle area, they used to burn cow dung along with some herbs so that the smoke which uh, gets up doesn't allow the flies to sit over the cattle. So, in the same way, Ayurveda has recommended inhalation of medicated smokes. These medicated smoke, if we are giving it through oral cavity, we are treating uh, teeth disorders, tonsillitis, uvulitis, mean like uh, swelling in the tonsils, or there is uvula which gets swelled, or there is some problem in the palate. Even in the cases of mucormycosis, you might be knowing in the past few years uh, after COVID, there is a problem known as black fungus. This black fungus we are treating with this only herbal fumes. When he, uh, I had a patient who came to me, he got operated and even after the operation he was saying that my headache is not going, I am not feeling very happy. The after doing the operation, the wound is not getting properly healed. So I asked him to just uh, go on cow dung and just pour some powder, which uh, medicated powder, which uh, he has to inhale from the nose and expel from the mouth. After doing this for around 7 to 10 days, he said that my headache has gone. Why? Because the fungus if is there, if you are killing it with anti, uh, antibacterial, antifungal herbs by their fumes, they are killing the problem and they are making the patient fine. In the same way, we are doing it with the hair, hair problems also. Many of the time the patient is suffering with the lice, dandruff and many other issues. So in those conditions, we also using this herbal smoke therapy. Generally, things like this. Generally, we are using it in the cases of heaviness of the head, uh, in the chest congestion, in the nose blockages, it releases hiccups, dyspnea, obstruction of the throat and strengthening the teeth. Next slide. Exercise. Yeah. Why it is very much important? Now it is very much important just to enhance the strength of the body. We are not doing, we are making our muscles flaccid. We are making our muscles too much weak so that they should not perform all those activities. So if we are doing this Vyam every day we are strengthening our muscles. By strengthening our muscles we are able to work more energetically. We can do all the things daily uh, very actively. So at least at least for 5 to 10 minutes minimum 5 to 10 minutes if we are doing this Vyam and exercise it will also help to regain the strength too because when we are working on our body our mental level also be very happy we mentally also be very nice so that is the reason why we ask that at least we arm should be done for 10 to 15 minutes next slide the other thing is that next slide signs of over exercise over exercising many of the times i had seen that the uh, if we ask our females of uh, pcos to do exercise they say they say that we are working on the gym we are doing gymming we are doing gymnastics they are doing n number of uh, physical activities which can lead to problem but they, they there is no yeah. any time frame which they are saying that for how long you have to do exercise but Ayurveda has rightly said that for how long you have to exercise in the gym if we are going for uh, doing workout we say that okay we are working on the bicep area <laughs> and sometimes we are breathing like this and even though we are doing it but it is not right the right time for exercising has been clearly said in Ayurvedic text it has been said that if you start getting the sweat over your forehead, if you if you are unable to uh, breathe from the nose and you have to start breathing from the mouth, this is the right time you just stop. It has been said that Ardha Shakti Vyam has to be done. Mean you don't have to give your full force to do exercise. If you are doing, uh, if you are giving full force to exercise, then you are not doing it in the right way. You are now started depleting your body. And it has been uh, clarified by the modern uh, scientist also that if you are doing exercise beyond the limit, then there will be hemolysis in the body. This hemolysis will causing anemia and this anemia will causing n number of problems. So now see to it, the patient or the doctors are, uh, the doctors are saying go and do exercise, go and do exercise. And the patients are very happily saying, okay sir, we are doing gymming, we are doing gymming. And when they go to the gym, there is no any uh, rules and uh, regulations that you have to do exercise at this uh, approximately at this level there is no stoppage but if 
Ayurvedic doctor says you have to see these things. If you follow this thing according to the Ayurveda, then definitely exercising will help you instead of leading you to the problem. Abhyanga. Now this is basically uh, this is a type of uh, machine which we had developed in our center. If you can see, these are the things from the these are the threads which are falling out. Uh, in uh, this is a basically like a shower. When you are taking a shower, all the water from that shower is falling over your body. In the same way. This in this shower there are n number of openings from where the oils is getting poured over the body of a patient and two massagers are continuously working over this. It takes around 8 to 10 liters of oil to uh, be used at patient of one uh, sorry to body of one patient. If we are doing this abhyangam, abhyangam uh, helps in the body to strengthen the body. Next slide. Daily Abhyangam, it has been said that Shira Shravan Pade Shutam Vishesh and Shiliyate means there are three things which has to be done on the daily basis Abhyangam and if you are not doing Abhyangam then at least at least Shira Abhyangam means the Abhyangam means the massaging of the head has to be done on the daily basis massaging of feet that is Pada Abhyangam I mean, uh, coming up in the next slide Pada Abhyangam has to be done in the on the uh, daily basis and even drop drop of oil has to be poured in the ear on daily basis now many of the times doctor says that you don't have to pour the drops on uh, on the ear as they are going to trouble you a lot i'll tell you something i had a patient uh, who, whose son was a urologist he was working uh, uh, in a big uh, company and uh, her mother was having a problem in which there is ringing of ear she came to me and she said that I am having this problem. My son told me that you are not allowed to take any of the Ayurvedic medicine because these will ruin your kidney and uh, liver. So you are not supposed to take any of the medicine but if you want you can only go for some of the external application that will be happy. I will be happy with that. I will not see anything. So she directly said I am not going to take any of the medicine of you. I want only the Panchakarma therapy. If you are willing to give me that then just let me know. I said okay I, I am uh, very much confident. He, there will be no any bad effect but I am not sure whether you will get cured or not because I am not sure because this is my first case only where I have to do the panchakarma and I don't have to give you anything internally so I am not very well aware if you are willing to take this thing then I am okay if you don't want to go with this it's your will so she said okay start doing the things what you want to do I did some of my procedure and after then she said I am feeling very better my problem is, is reducing but my ringing is not reducing I said if you want to treat your ringing then I have to pour the oil inside your ear. She said, okay, wait, let me ask my son. After then, I'll let him. And the next day she came, she said that my son said no to the uh, pouring of oil inside the ear. But on because I trust, to, uh, I trust you because from past five to seven years, I'm suffering with the problem and these doctors are unable to treat my problem. And you had treated with your panchakarma treatment in seven to 10 days. So I am very much confident that if I will take, accept that oil pouring treatment in my ear, it will be fine. So go ahead. I said, okay, if you are willing, you just give me a consent. I'll do that. I did that. And after, after around two months, she said that my ringing is 90% reduced. She was having vertigo, she was having ringing and that was reduced. So this is the thing. Generally, doctors in the modern science says no need to pour oil inside your ear. They will rupture your ear. They will rupture your ear drum. They will cause n number of problems. But if we are doing this, we are not causing any trouble to the patient. Even we are treating the patients. I, am, I will be showing you the reports of the patients in the coming slide. Next slide. Pada uh, This is basically the thing which in which we have to massage our foot daily. In reflexology also it has been said that previously we were walking on pebbles so by nature own thing those pebbles were hitting our foot at particular different areas and by pressing those particular points the body get activated but now we are wearing too much costly shoes we are wearing on the marble the floor there is no uh, acupressure point we are not getting those uh, acupressure over the foot but at least if we are doing this pada pen by this uh, Kansa van, this will help to strengthen the body. Even many of my patients who are having leg pain, they keep, they keep on saying we are having leg pain, we do not get relief. Uh, I had, we have taken so many of the medications. So in those conditions also, if we ask our patient just to massage their feet with this Kansa van along with the 
particular medicated oil as per the requirement of the body then definitely the patient's feet are getting better their leg pain is getting better even sometimes we have seen that the varicose veins who are causing trouble to the patients are also getting very better shirobhyang shirobhyang it is basically uh, a massage in which we do massage to the particular head area i generally do shirodhara shirodhara i am not mentioned in this in uh, shirodhara is a procedure in which we ask the patient to lie down over the table and pour a gentle drop uh, sorry a gentle stream of oil from the dip distance of uh, at least 4 cm and this makes the person feel very light it has been said that if you are doing this shirobhyang on the daily basis you will not having hair issues you will not having uh, graying of hair you will not uh, having headache you will not having uh, eye disorders even it has been said that if you are doing shirobhyanga by doing shirobhyanga we can increase the luster glow and complexion over the face also right udvartana what exactly is udvartana many of the times you have seen that in few of the ayurvedic centers powders are being massaged over the body why these powders are being massaged over the body in traditional uh, traditionally if we see in uh, our indian families previously mothers used to rub uh, barley flour over the body or uh, this moong flour over the body why they used to do these things because these are having <coughs> anti kapha properties whenever we are rubbing uh, powders over the body these will take out excess kapha you know why uh, in basant ritu holi is played this is the basic reason in that in that particular reason kapha is highly aggravated when kapha is highly aggravated in the body traditionally we used to apply powders of certain flowers of different colors over the body which are having the absorbing capacity they will absorb up all the kapha material from the body and will make you feel better but nowadays the tradition of holi is something like you just have to give color and that also made up of chemicals so these are not the basic pandas if i go traditionally i can say you that there is a tradition of flying kites uh, in uh, in uh, yes uh, why there is a tradition of that flying kite because they know that if you are having tilgod and after having tilgod if you are going in the sunlight for a longer duration your vitamin d deficiency will improve why there is diwali because when we are just burning those diyas they are cleaning the pollution of that environment our traditional festivals are not traditional festivals they are having certain logics behind them which has to be which we have to transfer to our uh, newer generation because if we are not giving these traditions to our newer generation these things will vanish away so that is why it has been said that when udvartan is being done over the body i had seen that if a patient of stiffness of the body like stiffness of the back stiffness of the shoulder area is coming to me i simply ask my patient to just take barley flour mix it with uh, uh, this uh, black pepper like you can uh, do it like 100 grams of uh, barley flour and 10 grams of black pepper mix it well and just rub it dry over your body just roast it a little and start rubbing it over your body if if you, if you are feeling a little more uh, dryness then you can add few uh, drops of uh, sesame oil or mustard oil in that and you just rub it over the body let it stay there for around 10 to 15 minutes after then if you are taking water uh, lukewarm uh, bath with the lukewarm water you will feel relaxed your stiffness will reduce if you are doing it continuously the stiffness will go away along with internal medication sometimes we have to give internal medication and sometimes i generally ask if it's uh, not too much then you can do this thing and you will feel relaxed sometimes we ask our patient to just take Uh, the sand and salt just roast it over the hot iron plate and make a bolus of it and just rub it over the stiffened area this uh, in udvartan we are directly applying it and in that uh, sand and salt totally we are just applying it on with a uh, muslin cloth these both the things will be reducing the stiffness from that particular area now why snan is important next slide snan is basically important we know we every day take snan but we have to take bath but we do not know the basic reason many of the times i have seen that i had seen i have to when i am taking the history of the patient i ask my patient uh, by what time you take bath are you taking bath after having a meal or are you taking bath uh, or are you taking meal after having bath many of the times people say that we get up late in the morning so we just first eat and after then we take bath if you are doing this thing you are landing a bit of problems why because when we are eating food we the uh, body, uh, the food needs energy to digest those things 
but the time we take the bath, we are just reducing the temperature of the body and making water. So when we are taking bath after having the meal, we are reducing the temperature of the body by which the digestion gets hampered and the patient will land up into bloating, acidity, heartburn, uh, heaviness in the body, pains, headache, heaviness, sleepiness. So see, just by uh, doing a right approach of taking bath, you are curing your diseases and if you are not following the right time of taking bath, you will land up into problems. So this is the thing. Why we advocate doctor have to focus on what exactly you are doing. Many times we see that if a patient of pain is coming, the in the modern medicine there is nothing else. They will say, okay, take this painkiller. We don't have anything else. But if the patient of pain is coming to us, we have to ask whether it is a pain of due to heaviness, whether it is a pain due to uh, along with the burning, or whether it is something else. Accordingly, we have to plan for the medication. So being an Ayurvedic doctor is not that easy. Being a modern doctor. Thanks, life. Meal time. <clears throat> Basically, breakfast has to be taken in the morning, early morning hours, and that has to be faced toward the east. Why? Because the sun is getting up from the east, and we see that when the sun is rising up, the heat inside the body is rising up. Sometimes it happens that in the days of cloud, we do not feel uh, too much hungry. When there is too much of uh, foggy uh, area, when there is too much of cloud, we do not get much hungry. You have seen that there is certain areas in uh, where there is six months of darkness and six months of uh, sunlight. So in those areas where it is six months dark, they used to bright up the things by uh, lighting up different different colors because these light give us energy inside the body to digest the things. Secondly, food should be started up with the sweeter things. But nowadays the tradition is that once the food is complete, you have to take the dessert. This is not the right thing. If you are, if you see when we are getting very hungry, sometimes we see that I am getting very hungry, just give me something to eat, just give me something to eat. If you see, sometimes we eat those dry food items like sprouts. In, if, if on empty stomach you are eating sprouts, I don't know whether any of you has observed this thing, but I had seen in my patients, many of my patients, if they are eating sprouts on an empty stomach or if, if they are eating apple on an empty stomach, definitely some of them will end, uh, end up having bloating in the stomach, some will puke and sometimes they will have loose motion. Many of the patients also will have headache. Why? Because these are the airy food items. These increases the air inside the body. And when there is nothing inside the body, like there is nothing inside the stomach, stomach is empty, there is only air. So if we are giving airy food items, at the airy time, the air will increase, it will blow up in any way. So it has been said that when, when you are uh, about to eat, start the food with the sweeter food item because sweeter food item will reduce the vata element and this takes a little lo longer time to get digested. When, uh, when we are eating these sweet food items in the last of the meal, we feel more of sleepy. So it is not the thing which has been said in Ayurveda that once you eat food, you just go and sleep. Only and only catnap is allowed in the summers, otherwise there is no need to sleep in the whole 12 months. So this is the reason why it has been said that you have to eat your meal with or start your meal with the sweeter food item and end up with the kashaya astringent uh, food items. Why? Why it has been said that next slide. Why it has been said that using a betel nut at the end, you might have seen that every time whenever you go to a marriage or uh, other functions they, in the end they are offering you betel nuts why they are giving you betel nuts because these have the capacity to increase the digestive juices these are astringent in nature whenever you eat this you just uh, you just you might have felt that there is something dryness inside the mouth the saliva is getting little lesser inside the mouth so in the same way whatever we are eating when there is too much of stickiness sliminess inside the stomach this will be reducing that sliminess and will be digesting the food and will be converting the food into the proper way so that it should get digested by the body. And why it has been certain next slide? You have to sleep on the left side. Uh, recently, I had a, I was reading the study of a modern doctor in which he had said that they had done a clinical trial in which they asked the patient to sleep uh, on the left side, on the supine position means on the back 
and on the right side now they have concluded that if they are uh, sleeping on the left side the gastric emptying of the juices are much more faster than sleeping on the back and on the right side why because the stomach is here stomach is on the left side so that is why it has been said that when you are uh, having a meal after then you are allowed to walk for 100 steps and after then you are suggested to sleep on the left side so that all the things get digested easily and it should not cause you bloating trouble indigestion all such things now seasonal panchakarma, this is already I have explained, Bhavan is to be done into Basant Ritu because this is the time of Kapha predominant, Basti is to be done into Varsha Ritu because Varsha Ritu is the predominance of uh, Vata, Virishan is to be done into Sharad Ritu, also Rasta Mokshan is being done into Sharad Ritu because in these conditions the heat inside the body is increased, many of the time we see that in summer we are feeling very hot but have you observed that in the Sharad Ritu also we are feeling very hot. So that is why just to bring Pitta into balance we have to give Viration and Rasta Moksha to the patient. Test Manma technique, it should be practiced on a daily basis. I will be giving you a demo of how we can do Test Manma technique next. So these are these are few success stories. This patient was having no any hair on the eyebrows, eyelashes and after treatment of 3 years all the hair over, her, over his body has grown back. Next. This is the case of infertility which I was telling you. If you see, uh, fatty liver is there, mitral fluid in the pouch of Douglas, polycystic ovary is there, and now the maturity is of 6 weeks. Next slide. This is the case of hearing loss. The patient came to us 9 2 21 Bilateral mild sensor urine hearing loss is there. In this, you can see that the uh, left hearing sensitivity is within normal limit, right is having minimum hearing loss. And on 12 3 2022, bilateral hearing sensitivity is achieved. And the modern doctor has said that there is no treatment without having hearing aids. This is a patient, if you can see this area, there is very much thinning of the hair and on that area it has been grown back. Next. If you see the melasma, the blackishness of the eyes on this particular area, if you see this is very black and that has become better. Next. If you see, there is a patch on this area, the patch is growing, growing, growing and it took around 29 months to regrow the leaves. This is a case of diabetes, generally we are treating diabetes and we generally any doctor if says that you are diabetic you have to stay on insulin or on hypoglycemic drug for whole life. There is no any treatment by which you can stop taking anti-hyperglycemic drugs. But in Ayurveda we are doing these things from past 3 to 4 years my father Dr. Chawla is working on diabetes and we had achieved success, very high success. From past two years, few of our patients have stopped taking medicine by just following what we had said. Even insulin has not been given to the patient. Even Ayurvedic medicines has also stopped. The patient is disease free. They are not taking any Ayurvedic medicine for diabetes. They are not taking any allopathic medicine for diabetes. They are not taking any insulin for diabetes also. But uh, in the initial way, suggest our patient to at least follow the things that we are saying for at least 3 to 6 months along with the internal medications, Ayurvedic medications which we are giving. Sometimes it takes around 1 year to uh, become disease free, sometimes it takes 8 months, sometimes 12 months. So generally in, uh, like, uh, in a time span of 12 months, we are achieving this success that 80 to 90 percent of the patients are getting disease free. These are the basic things which we are offering our, on our center. These are Vidyakarma, Uttarvasti. This is basically Uttarvasti is one of the things. Many of the times the patient are having problem in the urinary, urinary bladder, they are having prostatitis, they are having bladder uh, cystitis, like bladder issues. Uh, there is a condition which is known as urethral structure in which the patient cannot pee out properly. He has to fold, he has to put the pipes inside the pants to just urinate. And there is no treatment in modern science except surgery, they are giving surgeries, but we at our center are dealing with these things. We are just inserting certain type of oils or medicated waters inside the pen, through penis and we are helping the patient and the patients are getting treated without any operation. This is the leech therapy. Uh, in, we apply these leeches on a particular area where we have to target. These leeches will suck out the impure blood from the body and will help the patient to improve. This is the tarpan. Eye disorders are being treated with this tarpana uh, in cases of myopia where uh, the patient cannot uh, Clearly watch, we are doing this tarpana, it helps. This is a Vidhikarma. This Vidhikarma is basically an Ayurvedic acupuncture. Generally, people, if we say Ayurvedic acupuncture, 
they are not aware of this thing. They know only acupuncture because it is highly highly promoted. But Ayurvedic acupuncture, which, which is known as Vrith Chikitsa, is totally new to the uh, patient. So we ask if you do, if you get these things uh, done over your body, definitely within few minutes you will start getting the positive changes inside you. Next, this is what we are dealing. Uh, so this is my channel. If you want to subscribe. I, uh, I request you if you will subscribe this channel all these things all these reports whatever I had shown to you on my presentation you can see all the uh, updates on the my youtube channel my facebook page and my instagram page we are having approximately more than 300 videos of different type of patients which are not getting cured I had a patient recently who was suffering from hydratinitis operativa that is a condition in which there is a continuous leakage of pus from the body from different parts of the body like from the armpit from the groin area under the breast area on the buttock area and there is no treatment the patients are taking injections that injections are costing even 12,000 for one week and they have to take four injections in a week and that they do not know whether it has to go for six months or one year and they are not getting cured so uh, luckily uh, we, uh, we got the chance to cure that patient and that patient is almost 95% recovered and that in the time span of two and a half months. So there are certain type of things which modern medicine says we do not have answer for these things but if we are dealing it with the Ayurvedic medicine, we are helping the patient, we are doing our best to treat those things. If you have any more queries or questions, you are welcome. Thank you. Thank you.
recently my mom has been diagnosed with uh, grade 4 osteoporosis mm -hmm. and uh, it has to do with calcium and vitamin D mm -hmm. and I think it's a long process to restore mm -hmm. but is there a way that can be improved? Yes, we can give. We are providing Basti to the patient. We had a clinical trial in which we had given Basti of sheep, sheep Basti 15 days every month consecutive 3 to 4 months after giving consecutive 3 to 4 months the patient's osteoporotic changes have been cured. I have a query her RA was 109 few days back. It means she is RA positive and it is not like suddenly her RA becomes positive. If she is your mother then at least the RA has to be positive when she was young like 25 or 35 years of age. Many of the time it starts in that particular yes. age and after then it keeps on staying there. The doctors keep on giving anti-arthritic medications sometimes they have to use disease modifying drugs also even though the patient does not feel very much fine. But we in our center when we are dealing with these things 70 to 80 percent success rate are there. Sometimes within uh, a month or two the patient starts saying that my pain has reduced. Recently I had I had a patient who, uh, who was having uh, severe pain in wrist joint and knee joint and uh, he told me that I had went to a number of orthopedicians and they are saying that there is no cure for this thing and whenever he moves his wrist or uh, knee he was having pain and by the doctors it has been said that if you have to live then you have to walk only for 10 minutes in the whole day if you will walk beyond this thing you will not be able to survive for a longer duration time and you have to li live like same and somehow a patient of mine told me to, uh, told him that just visit the doctor see to it what he said he visited me I said hey, you will be fine he said how you say this thing that I will be fine because when allopathic doctors are saying there is no cure for this they actually do not have to diagnose why exactly the things are happening to that particular boy and the boy is around 24 years old just think of it in the age of 24 years when you are playing when you are working uh, this is the basic potential time when you have to earn all the things and you are supposed to say that there is no cure you have to lie over the bed and you can only walk for 10 minutes and that also with the pain what will the boy will what the boy will think of what what will happen to the parents so he, he i said there is no need to worry i think so if i am right if my diagnosis is right uh, you will be fine in coming few months. I don't know how much time it takes, but minimum three to six months will be. Uh, I am just asking you to have patience for at least three to six months. And three, three to three to six months, I think that you will start working out. The same happened. I had given him a medication of around a month, and after a month he came. My pain has fifty percent reduced. And recently, four days ago, he came to me. It's around three and a half months, I think. So it has completed. And now the boy is saying, I am playing for one hour. Previously he was told that he was not allowed to move more than 10 minutes and now he is jumping, running, playing, walking and climbing. Now how it is possible? Well, we just think of Ayurvedic principles. Many of the time patients say that my doctor has said that in your ear there is a ringing. It is because that the nerve is blocked. There is no cure to regenerate the nerve. And if the patient is coming to me, he says, how will you regenerate the nerve? I said, I do not know nerves. I do not know anything. I do not want to discuss the allopathic pathology with you. I just know this Ayurvedic principle. In Ayurveda, it has been said that it is only because of the air imbalance. So I am treating the air imbalance, how the nerve will regenerate, how the body will respond. That has to be a different study. I am not a researcher. I am a doctor. You are coming to me. I am giving you medicine. You are getting fine. If you want to know how the nerve is getting regenerated, go to a lab in a, a, a research center. Keep on, keep a check on your eyes and just see to it. The report which I had shown to you of a deafness patient, he is a, he is a final year graduate of an MBBS uh, student. And when he went to his uh, HOD to show his report, he said that there is no cure, you have to live with this. And if you want to uh, listen, you have to put your uh, put hearing aids to listen. Otherwise, there is no answer with this. We do not have any answer for sensorineural hearing loss. And he called me up and he said that I have seen your video and you are claiming that you can regenerate the nerve, you can make the patient hear. How will, how will you do, do this? I said, if you want to know this, then visit here. I cannot give you explanation on the phone. I am not here to provide all these things. I am not going to give you the pathological changes and all such things. It is, if you want to take treat, treatment, just pay my consultation, pay my fees. The medicine will be there with you. And he said, okay, fine. And after the month, he called me up and said that, 
uh, I'm getting, I'm not getting better, I'm not getting better. I said just have patience. I'm not saying that I am a, uh, I am a magician or I am the god. I'll give you medicine and the next time it will, uh, it will be fine. It takes time. Regeneration takes time. So it took around some time and the result is getting better. Anything else? Is, is there anything on uh, the big bag, the paralytic uh, patient? Yes. To not? In paralytic patients, once the paralysis has happened, there is degeneration of the neurons. Generally, we do not claim that we can reverse the pathology of the paralysis because once the once there is a damage, there is permanent damage. So we we uh, generally I I have not been able to see these type of cases more in my practice because I don't have a hospital. I'm running a center where the patients are approaching and they are having chronic disorders. But generally, when we were in hospitals uh, in my in Mumbai where I studied, I used to see a lot of patients on paralysis and. Out of 100 patients, like 30% of the patients recovered properly. They keep walking, but the fine finger movement doesn't come back. So I do not claim this thing, then yes, the patient will speak fluently, the patient will walk properly, all the things will happen. But yes, definitely we can say that if there is too much of stiffness, if you are, if you have to do like this, the patient will start moving the limbs normally. The patient will not depend on others. The patient will uh, feel better. Like we can increase the quality of life of the patient rather than being dependent on any other thing, but it cannot be reversed 100%. I know what are the limitations. Where I had a limitation, I directly say to my patient. I don't claim that yes, I can do this thing, I can do, I can treat cancer and I can uh, treat any other damn thing. It is not like this. If we are doctor, we have to be in limits, we have to tell our patients where are restricted, where we are restricted, where we cannot treat, what are the limitations. If we are not saying these things, then they will say these are the doctors keep on boasting a lot. Basically, uh, the group is uh, promoted to work on organic forms that we, we believe in uh, principles and uh, <laughs> we, we, buy, we collect the information from field and the same principles we apply in agriculture too. Okay. So it's like the validation, social validation process in the world. Yes. Anything? That is why I, I had shown few of the uh, success stories also. This is, these are just few. If yeah. you want, you can just subscribe my channel and you can see huge list of patients. This is the reason because if you people are aware, you are going in different parts of the country. So there also you can suggest that I will has the potential. It is not necessary that you can send those <coughs> patients to me. You can send those patients to your nearby Ayurvedic doctors because Ayurveda has the potential to treat n number of diseases. But these, but the modern doctors claim that there is no cure, there is no cure, you have to live with this thyroid, you have to live with this hypertension, you have to live with this diabetes, you have to live with asthma, whole life you have to keep on popping up the medicine. Just see to it if you are taking pills, you are not feeling comfortable. You feel like when these medicines should get stopped, when should I uh, live a happy life? So this is the reason we all Ayurvedic doctors, it is not only me, I just want that in the whole of the world Ayurveda principles should again be implemented. At least the patient should live disease free. They should not have to live a long life with dependent, dependency on medicine. Anything else? I am right the figures are going to bend. This is the rounded arthritis basically. But there is a limitation if you see the the fingers has changed to this area we cannot reverse the case but we can reduce the pain basic basic aim is to improve the quality of life life rather than we are claiming um ye bhi theek kar denge ye tera aur ye bhi theek ho jayega it is not like this the damage we cannot reverse the damage there is a limitation everything has a limitation we cannot reverse the damage Set of uh, breakfast items and food items in the afternoon and dinner items, like something like that, which will not cause more drama. Okay. Like Actually, I had prepared eye charts. Uh, I had prepared. Uh, 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 so, you can go to my website. This is devyalita.com. Just go over there, click on the eye charts, then there will be a window where it will be showing you have to fill your name and email ID. Once you've done that, after then, 
you just submit it there is there, uh, there a window will open up there and there are different type of diagram for vata disorders for pitta disorders for kapha disorders for obesity for uh, kidney stones there are different type of diagrams you can download from there first of all you will describe our uh, subscribe subscribe our subscribe. channel then you will see each and every you can keep on you can join my instagram i keep on posting daily everything like basically what food items we prepare like there is a formulation shrikhand that shrikhand is very much beneficial for vata property uh, persons then there is the food item uh, dhaniya panjeri this dhaniya panjeri helps the patients who are having uh, burning sensations burning uti and those who are having uh, toxic toxins inside the body who are having low digestive tract if they will be taking this thing it will improve the thing green lemon the sabhi wo shaam tak aapko achhi lagegi agar aap ek mahina laga lenge to aapki skin soft ho jayegi aur aapka complexion clear ho jayega iska tha aur think i have a final question yes because I see there is a lot of uh, interest of those have been a uh, top priority, and then I ask this question on behalf of this group. Yeah. I mean, in my experience, it's very hard to find a, a right doctor for uh, for Ayurveda and and also for homeopathy. I think both things uh, to me it's very clear that right diagnosis should be there. Yes. Then you can. It was yes. said I totally agree with you that, but I don't agree at that part of uh, diagnosis. I think diagnosis should be. very proper and very yes. serious once you know that this is a problem then uh, medicine can be sent uh, or it can be taken yeah. low oh, yeah. but uh, just wanted to ask uh, the your center uh, do you provide this say tele yes tele medicine online yeah 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 whatever you are having yeah, problem we have developed some question yeah. yeah. which will give me the right which will help me to achieve the right diagnosis yeah. even though in certain conditions i ask my patient to send me their images yeah. in the case of joint disorders i ask my patient to send me your videos yeah. sometimes i ask the patient to share your tongue images sometimes i ask my patient to share your eye images because these are the things which, without which i cannot reach the proper diagnosis Right, right now it is not uh, limited to india or amritsar only i am ha- i am having overseas patients also i am having patients from canada america new zealand africa and we are treating even the re- uh, yesterday there was a patient from greece she was having alopecia universalis she just came to know about us through these youtube videos and she approached us so in the same way we are having patients from all over the world and tele consultations are always Is this uh, mobile number? Or yes, yes. This is my mobile number. Uh, if anyone has to contact, you just contact on this number. These are there with my reception. Uh, reception is uh, for morning nine to evening seven. After then, it is with me. So, if you have any query, you just WhatsApp it on WhatsApp me on this, and we'll provide it because that's daily. Yeah, sure. Sir. Every patient's key or report or any online.